If you enjoy taking your camera out in nature or on a hike through a wonderful forest, there's lots of great opportunities to create some amazing images. But that's just the first step in making a great image. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to take your lackluster forest images and turn them into ethereal masterpieces. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor and I'm going to show you how to use Luminar Neo to give your forest images a bit more mood and punch. So if you're ready, let's begin. So once again, oops, uh, we're gonna start with noiseless. We're gonna start with develop raw, camera profile. And I'm trying to remember, well, I don't need to remember what they are. I just have to scroll over them. That one kind of does a nice job. I want more color. And hmm, camera standard gives us more color. But let's see that other one that's vivid. That's a nice job, actually. Definitely not black and white. This one gives us more tones, but I like what's happening with standard. So I think I'm gonna go with standard and stick there, okay? Now we're gonna look at the histogram again. We've got some stuff clipping in the background. Again, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm focused on this part of the image here, okay? If anything, I might actually increase the whites because see what happens here, okay? So I don't want anything clipping on the log. So I'm paying attention to the bottom half of the image only. There's a little bit of blacks clipping. I'm going to brighten it a little bit. And do the same thing with the fringe. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe the highlights down a little bit. Make sure we have detail on that log. Okay, and it did correct the background a little bit as well. Okay. That's getting close. Uh, color, white balance. Do we need to adjust the color at all? Again, I'm going to go to daylight. Okay. See how much warmer that immediately all the green punched out. Look at that. Okay, so that's how it was shot. Again, the white balance is 4,800. We can drag that closer to 5,500, or we can choose daylight. If anything, it's a little bit green and a little bit oversaturated. So I'm just going to bring it down a tiny bit. Okay. Tiny bit. So, so far, before and after. Big difference, right? Okay. So now I want to do um, the sun rays because I really had the idea here of the light coming through here and hitting this tree. Okay, so where I place it is going to be crucial. I think it should be coming from somewhere over here because my idea is I'd like it to come from here like it's hitting this log, okay? So maybe even coming from behind one of these trees. You see how smart it is that when you put it behind something, it's like the sun is hidden, but if you put it there, you get the whole effect, right? I like the idea of it coming out from something. Let's try there. Okay. So I'm going to place it there. I almost always warm it up. I like warm. Okay. And let's go random. Definitely want overall look darker. So overall look to the left is darker, to the right is brighter. And I definitely like the overall look. Look at this little neat little, see the more I, I increase it, the penetration, right? We get this cool little glow from around there. It's like it's creating a sunburst, right? Like you would get in your camera because if the sun was actually peeking out from behind the tree, you can create that sunburst with a small aperture. Okay, so I'm just gonna play with the randomizer. I want it to hit that tree. Oh, that looks good. See that? See, there's a beam of light coming there. Let's go even darker. See that? So if you're not sure what it's doing, do this. Take your amount up and your look down and you'll be able to see what it's doing. Okay. I really like that. 
Look at that. I'm just playing with the intensity and the amount here. Well, I could also play with the positioning, but I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose that effect. See how it changes when you go behind the tree? Same happens as when you're shooting. Okay. Oh, I like that. Look at the look at that the split beams there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. See that? Okay, so let me just dial the amount down a little bit. Like so. And I still haven't added a vignette. We can do that. Uh, oh, I'm gonna before I do that, I'm gonna go with the details panel. And I want to bring some more crunchiness into the log itself. So I'm gonna bring up medium details. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And a little bit of small details and a little bit of sharpen. I only want this on this bottom half, so I'm going to mask it using a linear gradient. Okay, so I only want it there. Okay. And then I'm going to do similar with structure. Uh, we also could try enhance AI on this one. Okay, so see what that does? Eh, I don't know. I find that one's hit and miss, but we could definitely increase the structure. And then same thing, mask it using a linear gradient. Just like that. So I just want the log. As a matter of fact, I don't want the front of the log. So I don't want this part too sharp. Okay, so I'm going to erase from the foreground a little bit. Okay, so if I'm looking at the foreground, there's before, after, oh, I'm going to erase. I'm going to go erase from over here, too. I don't want to add structure to this part. I only want it on the log. See that? One more thing I'm going to do with color is I want to minimize the color of the green in the background. Okay, so I'm going to bring the saturation down, specifically, actually, on green. So let's do saturation of green and yellow. And I can shift the hue a bit more as well if I want, a bit more yellow. And then just mask it the opposite way. So now I'm going to do linear gradient this way. Okay. So see if that's lowering the color and the contrast on the top part. Okay. See that? So before and after. I'm still not totally happy with the position of the sun rays. I would probably play with it a bit more. That's kind of cool too. Okay. Something like that, it's not bad. Okay. Do you have the idea of what I'm trying to do so that the log is sun kissed? Right? Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my teaching style and you want more step by step instructions to learn the software, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course. You'll find a link to it in the pinned comment below. Click either of the videos on the screen now to watch more photo editing tutorials using Luminar Neo, Lightroom, and Photoshop.